Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194 and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to stop in and visit and check out my video. And we are in the second part of the American Track Series with the Aston Martin. And again, I just want to say thank you to Antonio uh, from Italy. And uh, we are here, like I said, we're here at Indianapolis with the Aston Martin. And uh, oh, I love that red. I kind of like this color, this livery on this car. I really like the red popping out like that. Looks really good. Of course, of course, the Aston Martin looks good, really, mostly in anything, but <laughs> I think it's just a great looking car. And actually, kind of off the subject, but I saw one a few week, a week or so ago, actually uh, out and out in the wild. You know, just a regular. I mean, it was an Aston Martin Vantage. You know, based on the GT3 car. But man, that thing is. It's not the first time I've seen it, but it was really specced right. You know, and had, you could tell it had the big brakes on it. Probably, I don't know if they're probably carbon ceramics, but had had the, it was really specced nice. And man, was that thing sweet, man! It, they they really are great looking cars. Um, even you know, street cars, GT3 car, everything. But um, anyway, I'm super happy and stoked with this setup. Again, set my personal best. So, um, man, I'm. I, I, I'm just I'm thrilled just because, you know, setting my personal best with a car that I don't drive all the time, don't race all the time. It just shows how much potential is in the Aston Martin, um, especially for somebody that really knows it inside and out. Um, especially like somebody like Black Eye that used to race it all the time, which I haven't heard from him in a long time. Um, but anyway, uh, again, somebody that's just, you know driven the car a lot. But I really got it to feel really good. It's a really good package overall so i'm really happy with it so let's go ahead and do a couple laps again it can be like kind of like coda i mean i'm gonna try to be as detailed as i can um to show kind of the ins and outs and then really go over detail to the setup and of course the motec and all that so let's go ahead and get set up behind the car here so again we're coming down here and now, I should have said before I started this, but again, it's my normal thing. So again, it's like 29 liters. I, I set it up for 80 liters or 81 or something, but then I put a half of uh, half a tank of fuel in it, like a pit stop, like I've showed you in multiple, multiple videos, because it does come up in the rear. It comes up in the rear, I think, a couple, two, two uh, clicks when you're all the way down, but it does come up some in the in the in the rear so i wanted to make sure the car wasn't oversteer and was still stable because you got so many slow speed turns here you can get a power oversteer real easy so um but uh, i think i got that it's really solid so really really happy with it but anyway come down here to about the 400 right up to the 400 um actually in the car you know you feel like you're more toward in the middle here but because you're in the, okay, again you're in the car you are, you know, I'm past it. I'm looking at the 300. So that's the view in the car. So come down here. You want to do a late apex as late as you can. Now, these bumps with the Aston Martin aren't as bad as the Porsche. Uh, again, I haven't done a lot of setups, obviously, for Indy. But you can go, you know, if you nip them a little bit or go over the curbs, it's not the end of the world. Uh, the Aston Martin takes them really good. But actually, I missed it there. So that's all right. And again, you know, you can run over some of these curbs. You know, the, the Porsche upsets it a little bit, which maybe I need to do more work on that to see if I can uh, improve upon that. I mean, you don't want to hit them too hard, but if you run them over them some with the Aston Martin, it's not that bad. So, again, it's not near as bad as the Porsche through here. You don't get on them too much. And again, you want to go towards uh, – when you go through turn one there, you want to upshift into second. Let's go back because I want to make sure I relay this. You see I go down to first, and then I just get going. I go into second. Okay, now all these slower turns, I do that because, especially with the improved mid-range of the Aston Martin, you can get on the gas a little earlier, and the car won't, um, you won't get any kind of power oversteer. It helps with the drive, so you actually pick up some time. So just remember that. So I'll say that again here later. But again, you go around to the middle of this, you know, middle. Or you can look here somewhere around the end of this curbing on the right if you want to look at that. 
you know, when you're coming up to that. But somewhere here in the middle on the curbing on the right. And you want to try to get over almost basically on the curbing as far as right as you can so you can get a good angle to this here. Get downshift one. And then go right out to the curbing over here. And again, you're going to be matted all the way through here. Right to the floor. You're going to go up to fourth. And again, right when you end up going past that, like a car length past the end of this curbing is when you want to get on the brakes. That's my braking zone. And you're in fourth, but you want to go down to second. Um, again, same thing as you kind of like turn one. If you, if this is such a tight turn, if you get down into first and you're trying to feed in the gas, it, you know, for me anyway, this is just me. Maybe you can be better, but with me, it, you end up wanting to spin up the tires too much, or you're trying to fight the car. You're, it's a lot easier just to put it in second, and then the car just goes right around, and you can get on the gas early, and it won't upset the car. So, go down to second. Slid a little bit there. And you see, I, I, I try to stay all the way to the left if I can. Um, so I don't mind going a little wide back there if I bring it back. And I try to come off of here all the way to the left because it's really important to get a, a, a good drive going on this next straightaway. So again, you turn you know, right. And you want to go ahead and run over this curbing so you can be on the gas, straighten it out, get the best drive that you can down through here. Now, again, you're right before the 100. Of course, in the car, I'm right at the 100. As you can see, the 100's right over here. So, at the in the car, I'm kind of closer to the 100. But, again, you kind of get the, the gist of it. Um, again, it's going to be a late apex. So, you're going to come in here real late, right there. And if you nip it a little bit, I've, you know, a lot of times I would just barely hit the curbing. It's no big deal. doesn't upset the car or nothing. Again, stay to the left, come back, run over these as hard as you, more, as much as you can. Now, I try to say, if you hit, you know, hit these sausages a little bit, it's not the end of the world, but just try not to hit them real hard. You know, the little ones on the right there, like, like, like these, you see like this one, these things here, try not to hit those, but if you barely touch them, it's not the end of the world, but you want, again, get get on all the curb as you can. I mean, you want to be like this. You want to be the left tires all the way over on the left side of this curbing. And you want to stay to the left coming up here. And again, this is critical. You want to cut this as much as you can because um, you want to be on the gas. You go through here, cut it, and straighten it out and run out this wide. This definitely picks up some time right through here. And I was having a for a while, I was having a hard time really timing that. And the way I was doing it was basically as soon as I got back from that last corner, just for a split second, I already I went ahead and just, you know, basically right turn and got on the gas. So um, the more confident you can get and see actually here, I'm kind of waiting. I'm, I should have been on the gas already. So again, you know, I was having, I was a little weak right through here, but the more you can get on it, and get through here early and time it and practice and time it um, that you're definitely going to pick up time which I pick up some more time on my fast lap and getting running out here now this is one you don't want to you don't want to mess up now, I, I break right at the 300 at the very most if not before it so again because you do not want to run in deep through here at all because it's really going to mess up your lap so you really want to be this is a real narrow braking zone and narrow line through here and you definitely want to do a late apex through here and again the same thing as with every one of them um you know if you hit the curb a little bit it's not the end of the world just try not to hit it too hard but i try to come in late and run it close because you're want to you're going to want to go all the way to the right over here so you can get a I mean, because basically, once you take a left here, at this next turn, you're wide open all the way. I mean, all the way to turn one. So, <clears throat> or, you, know, you might, you know, if you don't hit it just right, you might have to let, lift a little bit. But mainly, you're almost pretty much wide open. So, you really want to go wide and get a really nice drive going off of this turn. So, I go bring it to the right. Now, again, I stay in second. I was using first before. And that's things I, you know, I had to learn with the Aston Martin, with all this stuff. And it is so much better in second. It gives the time for the car to work, hook up, 
easier on the tires, easier on you because you're not trying to, you know, have to manhandle the car. And you just go through here, but, you know, just be aware of it and try to get on the gas as early as you can. I'm, I'm full throttle was back there and just be wide open all the way. So let's connect all the dots. And do a, uh, this is my fast lap coming up. That was a 136.82. So again, blows my old personal best away by, shoot, probably almost a half a second. And, and again, it wasn't even a perfect lap. So again, there's definitely more time to be had. car is super drivable um, as far as I should say driver friendly you see here you see I hit those hit the barely hit those little sausages but I did better going through here that time that was better This is definitely a setup that you can just, you, you can be really consistent with it and just click them off. The car wasn't out of shape, wasn't sliding all over, nothing. And that was a 136.73. So again, getting faster and faster. Um, Definitely blew my per, my personal best by a good half a second, if not more. Um, so really happy with that. So let's go ahead and go to the setup, and we'll talk about some setup stuff. Um, and of course, you know, anytime you start with, you know, on a stint, it takes here one thing. It takes a good two to three laps before you really start running some decent times just because it takes that long for the tires to really get optimized as far as pressures and things like that so you can't go out on the first lap or even the first hot lap actually even if you did you know going out on your first out lap and then even your your first hot lap you can't get a killer time because the tires are still coming up to temperature and things like that so again it takes a good two to three laps to really start clicking off the times you can see there i was getting faster and faster so and that was you know i started at 41 liters and i was down to 20 something so again it just you know it kept going down 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 so getting faster and faster so that's i like to see that because that means it's all working really good and you're not burning the tires off or anything like that so Here's the setup. We got 24-7 left front, 25-5 left rear, 26-4 right front, and 26-6 right rear. Uh, you can see the temperatures is for mid-20s. Um, the toe is negative 0.2 in the front with camber at negative 3.8 on the left front, negative 3.6 on the right front with the caster at 14. The toe on the rear is 0 .0, positive 0 0.05 with the camber at negative 3.2 on the left rear and negative 3 on the right rear. Now, this is really, again, you know, tuned to make sure that the, the temperature um, between the inner and the outer is all within around 3 degrees. So I try to keep that on all these tires. That's what dictates me moving the negative camber, you know, either way. So, again, I'm just going off of what it's telling me. Um, as far as, the like, the toe on the rear, I tried, a, you know, over double that, and I just kept bringing it down because what it was doing was when I had double that uh, of the positive toe here in the rear, it was making the back end want to slide too much. It was just, you know, it, did, it was giving it more uh, oversteery coming off the corners. So I just kept bringing it down like, you know, four or five at a time until I got down to this. So it's really settled now. So it feels super, super solid. 
Um, but other than that, you know, I tried a lot of different negative cambers and things like that. But um, pretty much, you know, lots and lots of laps. <laughs> Uh, electronics are three, three, and three, so three, 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 and again, you know, it wasn't getting on the TC or anything, so real happy with that. Fuel, of course, I had, I, like I said, 81 liters, and then on that one, I did the pit, like, like simulating a pit stop with uh, 41 liters. Here's the tire wear off of there. You got, you know, it's a little more on the left front than the rear, but not drastic. And again, you know, you get a lot of the left, you know, left side tires are what's taking a the beating with these hard right hand turns but on the right side you can see it's dead even it's 290 290 you know right there so i'm really happy with that you know you got light graining on the right front that's all um so super you know solid as far as the wear goes uh, mechanical got six on the anti roll bar 60 on the brake bias with a steering ratio of 15 springs are 155,000 all the way around with a 400 bump stop rate on the front with a three bump stop range and on the rear the bump stop rate is 500 with a 14 bump stop range any roll bar is four and the preload on the diff is 80 so <clears throat> excuse me so over this uh start at the top i tried a lot of different any roll bars um but i i seen in a lot of a lot of uh some of the corners you can see the car pitching on one you know one corner of the car um, and that's when you start getting some of that oversteer or the power oversteer. So I, I just would go one click at a time until I got to here. And it just, and every time I did it, the car got faster and more stable. So I just settled for this because it, it, it feels really, really good through here on that. And it's not understeering at all. Um, again, the brake bias is right. Good, right with here. Now those laps that you saw, I did at 59. So you can go down to 59 because that's what I would probably do in a race. I'd probably go down, you know, before the pit stop, I'd probably already got dialed the brakes down, uh, one point and then, you know, you go off from there. So it should be, you know, around there is good. Steering's 15. Like I said, um, springs, I tried a lot of different springs, um, stiffer all the way around. Um, you know, staggered, all kinds of stuff. And this is, you know, this is definitely the best, without a doubt, um, because it's the stiffest spring you can run and still not slide, still have grip. Um, so this is definitely the best spring package, I think, is this here. And, of course, the bump stop rates. I did have a lot higher bump stop rates. Um, but, you know, again, you're going over some of these bumps and dips and things like that and the curbings. And I didn't want it to upset the car enough to where it slowed it down. So, again, I took some of that out. And there's really, you know, I'm trying to think, but there's really not any, like, high speed, um, you know, like the S's at Coda, for, for example. You know, where you're going in through there, you're going through there really hard. There's really nothing like that here. Everything's very point and shoot. Um... You know, you got the one right hand, you know, long right hand turn going down that uh, to that chicane, that, or not chicane, but that real hard turn there at the near the end of the lap. But I mean, there's no really fast, fast turn or changing directions. So again, um, I, you don't, I don't think you need a real high bump stop rate. Uh, so I went with a lower type thing, so it actually soaks up the bumps better and doesn't upset the car doing it. So, But I did keep the range kind of tight because I don't want the car to react. I don't want the car, I want it to react, but I don't want the car to, as far as the car itself, to overreact uh, before it hits the bump stops. I wanted it to get on the bump stops before it gets any kind of movement Although that's when, because that's when you'll get into a tank slapper or lose control. So that's why I kind of tighten, make sure the bump stop ranges are kind of tight, but the rate is not um any roll bar again on the rear this is really good i tried a lot of different preloads on the diff and um tried some different settings on any roll bar settled for this and um i actually had it at 60 70 and 80 were the three that i really tried and as i went down it got worse so as i went down to 60 it just you could once in a while you could hear the tc kicking in um, you could feel the one tire spinning, this and that, you know, coming through some of these, t t you know, slow turns. So every time I clicked it up, it just felt better and better. So I settled for 80, and I think it's really solid, and I think you'll get better tire wear off of that also. So again, and of course, I to go with it, I did the anti-roll bar at 4, you know, just to make sure there's you still don't get any kind of uh, mid-corner understeer or anything like that. 
shocks. Uh, we got 12, 15, 14, and 14 on the front, and 5, 1, 13, and 11 on the rear. So I haven't even looked at Motec since the last time, so I figured it would be a surprise. So let's take a look. That's at the fa yeah, I know this is a fast lap. That's the lap before that. That's the fast lap. So again, um, yeah, it don't look real bad. I mean, I think it's got decent. I mean, it's uh, 49.6 there, 50.4 here, uh, 50 right on here. This is 50. That's 49.9 here. That's 49.1. That's uh, 50.8. A little high there. Uh, let's see, 49.7 and a little over 50, like 50 point, what, 2 or something like that, 50.3. So, again, a teeny bit, you know, a teeny bit here or there, but nothing really bad. I mean, I don't think I, I don't think I want to make an adjustment on, on that because things do change. I mean, you go from one lap to another, and you see how that is. I mean, that's, that's change right there. That's See, if you look at that now, that's 50 right on the nose. So, again, and that's even closer. That's uh, 48. Yeah, that's like just basically not even 50. So, again, depending on the lap, you're, you're going to have variations. So, again, that's why I say, you know, you don't want to be like a dog chasing his tail. So, you want to be pretty much, you know, you got to know when to make an adjustment and when not. And I still like the way the graph is. It looks good, really good. So I'm really happy with that. So let's move on to the arrow. And arrow got 15, 55 in the front. I mean, and 72 in the rear with a six wing and a three and a three in the brake ducts. And the front arrow variation is a 2.6 to the positive. So again, um, well, of course we got 81 liters. So let's take a look at at like when you get near empty, you got 55 and 72 here. So when you, so you see it comes up two, so it goes up 74 and that comes up one to 56. So again, you know, it keeps this pretty close. Um, your front arrow variation just goes up, you know, point one, you know, point one. So that's not too bad. Um, but I just, again, I wanted to make sure that there was no any kind of oversteer. Like I said, I put it to 40, 41, I think. See, it came up one. So basically just came up one on the rear. But again, I just want to make sure, because you, you'd be surprised. Sometimes you do stuff, and you would think that, oh, this, you know, this shouldn't be no big deal. And then you just make one click here or there, and then all of a sudden now, you know, it could be just this one corner and no, everybody else is fine, but that one corner you have some kind of, you know, handling problem or something. So, again, I just don't take it for granted, uh, you know, what they say about assuming. So, again, um, I just do check it and make sure that it's still, you know, a raceable package. And this is definitely a raceable package. This is really nice, really happy with it. I hope you all try it. I hope you enjoy it. Um but again, um, really makes the Aston Martin fun to drive, and uh, you know, some you know just makes it solid because everywhere you go, it just goes there, and it just handles without wearing you out. So really, really fun, and I hope uh, Antonio, I hope you enjoy it for sure, and I hope y'all give me a like and subscribe. Um, really would help out the channel and uh, or sharing it. All those things are support, um, just like PayPal and things like that. All those, whichever way you want to support or multiple ways, I appreciate it. And thank you to everybody that has. Um, it makes a big difference. And again, you know, with the new algorithms that uh, YouTube has, all those things make a big difference as far as, you know, watch time and, and liking and, all, you know, all those things. So again, any comments or feedback are always appreciated. And uh, I sure hope you come back and visit again really soon. See ya.